Okay, in this video, we're going to take the Markov cohort simulation that we had before and add in some time varying transition probabilities and time varying payoffs to the model. At the moment, you'll see that we have a constant transition matrix that applies in every cycle, and also the payoffs in each state are constant for each cycle. But what we want to do is have these depend on which cycle in the model we've reached. So let's first of all give ourselves a bit of extra room and then we're going to look at the transition matrix. So we can no longer say that this transition probability is 0.96. We can also no longer say that this transition probability is 0.95 and we don't have constant values for these transition probabilities either. So we'll clear those out. The transition probability from healthy to dead in each state was given by QX. I can write QX in here. Excel doesn't know what it means. It's my job to keep track of what it means. And then the probability of going from diseased to dead in a given cycle was 0.4 plus QX. And again, Excel has no idea what that means. It's my job to keep track. Now we use this uh, shorthand notation of a hash or a pound sign to just say, put whatever you need to in here to make the row probabilities all sum to one. Okay, so this transition matrix now describes that we've got some time varying behavior, but our Markov cohort simulation no longer works because it expects this to be a numeric matrix that it can work with. So let's just clear all of that out. It's no longer relevant. Okay. No more errors in the model, but also no more model. We're starting again. Okay. So let's now have a lookup table for some time varying quantities. So we've got the cycle and then we want to be able to look up what is QX, what are the costs in the healthy and diseased state and what are the qualities in the healthy and diseased state. Let's clear all of that. Okay. Right. Now what we'd like to be able to do is say in cycles 1 to 10, I'm going to have a certain set of values. In cycles 11 to 20, a different set of values. Cycles 21 to 30, another set, and so on. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't understand what this means, but what you need to do is include the lower end of that range. So instead of 1 to 10, I just put 1. 11, 21, and 31. And then I can start filling it up with the different values that we have according to the cycle. So 0 0.01 was QX when the cycle was 1 to 10, then 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.08. And then these were all of the other values uh, for the costs in the healthy and disease states, qualities in the healthy and disease state according to the cycle. That's all good. And just format it nicely. Okay. Right, now we're ready to start including this in our model but we're going to make life a bit easier for ourselves by also including columns in here to keep track of those time varying quantities for each cycle. So I've now got a bit of room some time varying quantities. 
and what are they going to be? So I'm going to be tracking QX. I also want the cost in the healthy state, the cost in the diseased state, the quality in the healthy state, and the quality in the diseased state. Great. Now, in each of these columns, I want to use the cycle to pick out the right row of this data table. And once I have the correct row, I'm going to tell it which column I want to pick out. And to do that, we use the VLOOKUP function. So VLOOKUP, first you tell it what's going to be your index to pick the right row in the table. And that's going to be the cycle number. We're always going to be looking in this column H, so I just put a dollar in front of that so it doesn't change. And then our lookup table is this range here. So it's going to look in the first column for the value that I gave it, which is the cycle. And that's going to help it determine which row it needs. And then I want to pick out the second column to get QX. Now, you'll notice that it has this extra thing that you have to tell it, which is whether to use an approximate match or an exact match. In this case, you want to use an approximate match because this table doesn't have all the different values that cycle can take. And what you need to do is say approximate match and then make sure that you've used the lower end of the range here. And these need to be sorting, sorted in ascending order. So true. You can go and you can read the help on the VLOOKUP function. You might be able to understand uh, how they describe how that true or false uh, flag works. But the important thing is to make sure that it gives you the results that you're expecting. So in cycles 1 to 10, it's giving us a QX of 0.01. In cycles 11 to 20, it's giving us a QX of 0 0.02 and so on. So this formula is doing exactly what we expect it to do. Okay, and we copy it across. And now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to pick out different columns from that lookup table. So I just update these one by one. There we go. Okay, so the cost in the healthy state from cycles 1 to 10 is 10. It goes up to 25 in cycles 11 to 20, etc., etc. So these time varying quantities are now telling us for each cycle exactly what we need to know. So let's now work on the state membership in our cohort simulation. To calculate the number of people who are going to be in the healthy state, we only need to look at how many were in the healthy state beforehand because it's not possible to enter the healthy state from the diseased or the dead state. And we had that hash or pound sign that tells us we need to make sure that this adds up to one. Well, what that means is that hash here must be one minus 0 0.03 minus QX. So one minus 0 0.03 minus QX. Hopefully you see what I've done there is this 0 0.03 is staying the same throughout all the cycles. So I can refer back into this transition matrix, whereas QX is changing in each cycle. So I need to pick it out of this time varying quantities column. So let's just check it's done what we expect. We had a thousand and the probability of them going to the disease state was 0 0.03. The probability of them going to the dead state was 0 0.01. So there's 0 0.96 should be the value of this hash. And if you multiply 1000 by 0 0.96, you get 960.
So that's working fine. To calculate how many we have in the disease state, it's going to be those people in the healthy state who transitioned to the diseased state, plus the people who were in the diseased state and have survived. So that's going to be the probability of survival is now given by this hash entry. So 1 minus 0 0.04 minus qx. And then to work out how many people will be in the dead state, it's going to be those in the healthy state who died plus those in the diseased state who died. And their probability of dying was 0 0.04 plus qx. And then also anybody who was already dead is going to stay dead. There we go. So now we have our state membership is being calculated according to these time varying QX values. And we also need to use time varying payoffs. So to calculate the costs in the healthy state, we multiply the number of people in the healthy state by the payoff in the healthy state. We do the same for the disease state. How many people are in the disease state? multiplied by the payoff in the diseased state. Fill that down. For qualies, again, we're looking at the people in the healthy state multiplied by the payoff in the healthy state. For the diseased, looking at the people in the disease state multiplied by the payoff in the disease state. And then we copy this down as well. Okay, and you should now have that the average cost per patient is 6,919. The average qualies per patient is 20.11. There you have it, we've introduced time varying transition probabilities and payoffs into our Markov cohort simulation.